Hey there, thanks for coming to my channel. These guys right here are my Patreon crew and it's thanks to them that I'm able to make content and fill your days with fluffy blue kangaroos. I never once imagined my channel would go this far so I am so insanely grateful to all my amazing patrons. But I'm also thankful to you just for being here because I definitely couldn't have done it without people like you simply watching my stuff. So, thank you! Alright, let's get to the video. Enjoy! Hello and welcome to my first bottle episode in my brand new recording studio! What do you think of my new digs? We got a new background going on, we got a new chair, and I'll show you the rest of the room later because right now I would like to show you 10 insane fursuits. And by that I mean over the top, ridiculously detailed, really ambitious, just drawer dropping suits that require a huge amount of skill to pull off. As always, remember that this is my personal list, yours could very well be different, like it was hard enough for me just to pick 10. This list is in absolutely no particular order and I made a little rule that I could only pick one per maker, otherwise this would just be uh, 10 elk dragon fursuits. First up on my list, we have the LED Gem Raptor. I don't know if this character actually has a name or not, everyone just seems to call it the LED Gem Raptor. This work of fursuit and LED mastery was created by Danny Lyons and M. Blade Akita. The awesome fursuit maker plus LED wizard equals one of the most epic fursuits I have ever seen. It debuted at Anthrocon 2017 and instantly went viral, and rightfully so. And I'm stunned they can even get that many LEDs to work in a fursuit because I have heard of so many issues of fursuits and LEDs, including my own, because Little known fact, did you know that Pokari actually used to have LEDs in him? While it looks awesome, it was more for less his first time working with LEDs, so I knew it was going to be pretty temperamental, and unfortunately they all stopped working after my first con. Eh, you win some, you lose some. But let's go back to the Gem Raptor. The thing I love the most about this suit are the wings, because you don't see many suits with arm wings in the first place, let alone ones that just pack them with LEDs. This suit is an absolute marvel, and I really, really, really Really hope I get to see it in person one day. Continuing the trend of electronics and suits, you probably see this next suit already, but there is no way I couldn't put it on this list. I give you the always epic base. If this suit doesn't give you chills, then you might want to get your pulse looked at. The suit was made by Base themselves, also known as Beauty of the Base, and it's gone through three iterations so far as their first at making skills have improved. I don't even know how this thing works. No, me. Okay, I am the main <laughs> Like, who in the first place thinks to put a speaker, a functioning speaker, in a fursuit? And then you've got the voice changer with the English accent and guff. It's just, it's so perfect. Electronics aside, did you see the markings on that thing? Like, I don't think there's more than an inch of fur where it doesn't change colour or something. Because if you don't know about fursuit making, basically to get markings that bold and bright, you have to manually sew them in. Sometimes by hand, sometimes by machine, depending on how skilled you are, but either way, you still have to draw them all out one by one on each piece of fur colour, then cut them all out individually, and then sew them all together like the world's most infuriating jigsaw puzzle. And of course, how can you not stop and stare at those teeth? Like, I, I love suits with expressions like that. That sort of scaled, toothy expression is one of the hardest to pull off in first sitting. And Bass is just... Like on a bass! I keep calling it a bass like the fish! Bass absolutely nails it. We're out next suit. We're off to Kiwi Land for Sparky Can Do. Sparky has been one of my favourite fursuit makers for a long, long time now. But just recently she completed a suit that blew even my expectations out of the water. I give you... Jex. If you've ever played Second Life, you may recognise this species. I've seen people with these as personas before, but never did I ever expect to see one in a fursuit pulled off so well. Especially those ears, like, I don't know how she's made them stand up so nice and strongly without building them out of concrete. So my favourite part of the suit definitely has to be the tail. I, I, I never knew rainbow looks so good on cream. Just the sheer amount of markings around on this suit just make it look absolutely crazy. I hope whoever owns this suit starts taking some like really professional photo shoots with it because dang, I could definitely see a picture of that fursuit just nicely hanging on my wall. Just, just right there. 
Ah. Number four on my list, we come to my elk dragon slot. Ah. It was so hard to choose just one. I want to give an honorable mention to Capri. Like, it was it's definitely one of my favorite suits and it is definitely insane, but I think there was one that was a little bit crazier. Let me introduce you to Orion. Oh, dragon skills are really out of this world. You got four arms though, on first suit. You got four arms. <laughs> this suit is from 2015, but the fact that this suit happened at all is incredible. I really, really, really wish I could find more photos of this or even a video. I just, I cannot find anything. If you know of any, please, 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 please show me. The other thing that really gets me with this suit are those massive ear holes, because a space like that would really impact your ear structure. It should really be like weak and bendy over, but no. Nope. There they are, just standing there, defying gravity, as aliens do. I really hope they made some monster plugs for that. <laughs> yeah, not much else to say on this suit, just the alienness of it, the forearms of it, it's 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 insane. <laughs> That's why it's on the video, it's an insane fuzzy. In my number five slot, we have another collaboration suit, because it seems when you just get two makes together, their skill levels combine and they just pump out a suit like never seen before. This suit was a collab between Made For You and Freak Hound Studios and I followed its constructions for months before it was finally finished and man, I so wish I could have won the auction. I present the King Hyena. Now you see why it took him so long to make. All those markings are sewn in, they're not airbrushed. Every single one has to be traced out, cut out, sewn in together, and put all together like the crazy makers they are. I don't know how they pulled this suit off without any mental breakdown. <laughs> Blue and brown is one of my favorite color palettes too, and the shades they chose are absolutely beautiful. I don't think I've ever seen a blue like that either. Like, it's almost a turquoise, it's so pretty. Just the whole design in general is really inspiring. Did you see the inside of the ears there? It's like a cracked blue with gold in it. And the credit for the design goes to none other than Barney, one of the old time greats of character design. So with all this talent behind the suit, there is no way it could have turned out anything but incredible. Next is a suit by Stuffed Panda Studios, whom I also could have used to solely fill this list. Took me a while to pick which one, so in the end I give you Fizzy the Striped Hyena. <laughs> Yes, another hyena. They're just really good at being detailed. This guy features both sewn in markings and airbrushing to really give it that hyper realistic look. However, there's one thing on this suit that I have never seen before and it, it's such a small detail that most probably missed the first time. But just look closely in at those teeth. This, this jewelry on those teeth. It's just such the perfect detail to tie it all together and really give it that Aztec-y kind of feel. Even just the detail on the mouth in general, like you've got all the dirt on the teeth and that lip looks wet, I swear. I see something new every time I look at this suit. And for the final blow, the eyes even light up, because when you're that skilled, why the heck not? But let's move on to a species a lot less common than hyenas. In fact, I've never seen anyone with a persona like this before, let alone a fursuit, so... Here to tell you that anything can be anthro, we have Seal. Yep, that's a snail. That is an anthro snail. And it's a snail that is really, really well done and really cute. How do you even do that? I'd love to talk to the owner of this suit and just ask them why, because it's such an unusual choice. I'd be really intrigued to find out how they came up with it. I love everything about this suit, from all those little freckle details to their big punchy fingers and their shell, which actually functions as a backpack. That's clever. It's also one of the few suits that uses a wig instead of fur for hair. Most people use fur because wigs can be a real pain in the butt to work with and it's really hard to get it to flow and look natural with the rest of the suit. But Snell's hair is absolutely perfect, especially under that little beanie. It's too cute! From what I can find, I believe the suit was made by themselves, but I'm not too sure. So either way, this suit stands out as one of the most unique ones around, and I love it. A suit doesn't have to be an extremely uncommon species to be unique though, no. You can still have a simple design and really stand out. Especially if your tail is literally bigger than you are. Say hello to Alec A, the Galactic Saber. Ever wanted to 
sleep anywhere, anytime. Just have a tail that's so big, it doubles as a mattress. I really want to know how the conversation between the commissioner and the maker went with this one. Like, hey, here's my character. Oh, cool, no worries, it's this much. Oh, by the way, the tail is eight feet long. It's like, what? I can't imagine what the upkeep and travel for a tail of that caliber would be like. It would be so annoying. Like, this guy gets a get out of brushing free card from me because by the time you finish brushing one section, the last one's gonna be unbrushed already. It's gonna be impossible to keep that brushed. I'd also really like to know how that tail even stays attached. You'd have to sew it with, like, shipping cables or something because I don't think even upholstery thread's gonna be strong enough for that. The guy that owns it must have the back muscles of a silverback gorilla by now. So the suit was made by Furtherwind Studio back in 2015, but still stands as my favourite suit of theirs. The owner is Australian too, so I really hope we get to run into him someday. Or if you're wondering how they got their tail through the mail, all you gotta do is unstuff it, vacuum pack it, and then send it off. Because when you vacuum pack it, it's a lot smaller. Like, you'd be surprised how compact things can get when you vacuum seal them. So, then he receives it in the mail, opens it up, and then just has to get his own stuffing and restuff it. It's pretty simple, actually. Our next crazy fursuit only just recently debuted at Anthrocon, and unfortunately got a lot of mixed reactions. I, however, loved this suit to pieces, and the amount of detail in it absolutely qualifies it for this video. So, prepare to have your mind blown by Rio Lepidotera. has to be the most detailed suit I have ever seen. The fact this suit exists goes to show that there are really no limits when it comes to the skill of fursuit makers. This is also my favourite example of using both sewn in and airbrush markings because at first I couldn't even tell which for which. I stalked their Twitter a little bit more and I managed to find the works in progress before it was airbrushed so there you go. Just with a little bit of air, no, actually probably a lot of airbrushing, a lot of skill, a lot of time, a lot of patience, you can go from that do that. Oh, it's, it's so cool, so much skill. And let's not forget about that face. Like, it's definitely not your conventional type of person head. I don't know how you'd even breathe in that, but she clearly somehow does. The detail is absolutely spot on to the point where if anthros were real, this is what I think they would look like. Everything about this suit smashes fursuit expectations and runs with them flawlessly. An amazing monument of a fursuit. And lastly, but certainly not leastly, we have a suit that is Basically a walking rave. Introducing the dazzling Sparkle Saber. Yeah, if you haven't already guessed by now, uh, I really like things that glow. Sparkle's markings themselves glow, the whiskers glow, the teeth glow, the nose glows, and then there's even more glowy random spots throughout the suit. They can give Nyan Cat a run for their money. Man, I really want to know how this suit looks on the inside. I don't get how you can pack that many lights into a suit, run around and dance in it, and then they still work. Even in daylight with all those amazing rainbow markings, you would still bring the party. But lights aside, how cute is his little pudgy face? I want to just grab his little chubby cheeks. The suit was made by the owner who goes by the person making business Sparkle Creations. I've been watching this maker for a little while now and they have improved at an insane rate. Like, I need more words to describe insane, but it's insane. <laughs> yeah, it's very obvious to see that they have been working very hard and I don't reckon it'll be long before they even outdo this. So there you have it, 10 crazy fursuits. Which one was your favorite? Or you probably have a favorite that I didn't even mention. Let me know in the comments. Maybe you've even got your own 10 crazy fursuits. Let me know everything in the comments below. And that's it for another bottle episode. Hope you enjoyed. I'll see you in the next one. Bye!